Hello, welcome, my name is Norman Fenton. This short video is one of a series that I prepared concerned with probability and risk assessment. There's a special focus on Bayesian probability because risk assessment and decision making is ultimately about how we update our beliefs in some uncertain events as we observe new evidence about those events. And Bayes is the ideal formalism for doing that. Confidence intervals are a standard statistical method for expressing uncertainty about something such as the true proportion of voters who favour a particular political candidate. But the standard statistical methods for expressing confidence intervals that you hear, by which I mean those used by classical frequentist statisticians, do not actually mean what most people think they mean. This video explains why. In fact, most people are totally perplexed when you tell them the actual meaning of these confidence intervals, because it's unintuitive and it fails to capture natural assumptions about uncertainty. In contrast, I'll show why the Bayesian approach to confidence intervals is both intuitive and simple. You will all have seen or heard statements like this one from pollsters during an election campaign. Support for candidate Joe Bloggs now stands at 43%. The margin of error is plus or minus 3%. Which of the following do you think most closely represents your understanding of the above statement? A. It's certain that 43% support blogs. B. There's a high probability that 43% support blogs. C. It's certain support for blogs is between 40 and 46%, with the most likely being 43%. D. It's certain that support for blogs is between 40 and 46%. E. There's a high probability that support for blogs is between 40 to 46%, with the most likely being 43%. Or finally F. There's a high probability that support for blogs is between 40 and 46%. Most people assume the correct answer is F. Indeed, a statement like there's a 95% probability that support for blogs is between 40 and 46% is a meaningful statement expressing our uncertainty about the unknown proportion of voters who support blogs. But none of the above are even close to the true meaning because such statements are invariably based on classical frequentist statistical analysis. So how about this statement? Support for candidate Joe Bloggs now stands at 43%. The margin of error is plus or minus 3% with 95% confidence. This time, we've made explicit the uncertainty. So surely this means that there's a 95% probability that support for blogs is between 40 to 46%, which is the intuitive and most common assumption about the confidence interval. Well, again, no, it doesn't. The problem is that whereas a statement about the probability of an unknown value is natural for Bayesians, it's simply not allowed because it has no meaning in the classical frequentist approach, which has to assume that data comes from repeated experiments. Hence, the exact frequentist meaning of the statement support for candidate Joe Bloggs now stands at 43%, the margin of error is plus or minus 3%, is if we could repeat the sampling many times and each time record the exact proportion of votes for blogs in the sample, then every time the proportion would be in the range 40 to 46. If an additional confidence value was added to the statement, such as support for candidate Joe Bloggs now stands at 43%, the margin of error is plus or minus 3% with 95% confidence, then the exact statistical meaning is that if we could repeat the sampling many times and each time record the exact proportion of votes for blogs in the sample, then for 95% of the times, the proportion would be in the range 40 to 46. Now these statements don't capture any intuitive notion of uncertainty that lay people can understand. And the underlying statistics and assumptions involved in doing traditional confidence intervals are quite complex, involving concepts like maximum likelihood estimation. Section 12.5 of our book provides the details, but you don't need to know any of that, because the Bayesian alternative that I'll now demonstrate is much simpler and more intuitive. With Bayes, we start with an assumption about the true proportion of people supporting blogs. In this example, we're going to use an ignorant prior assumption 
that support for blogs could just as likely be anywhere between 0 and 100%. This is a so-called uniform 0 100 prior distribution. So you can see that's how we've defined it here. But we could have used any of these other distributions available in a gene risk if we had more specific prior knowledge about the true proportion supporting blogs. So there's the uniform distribution displayed as a graph. What we're going to do is use observed data, in this case the number of people supporting blogs in a given sample size, to revise our belief about this true proportion. Here we're assuming that each person asked in the sample is independent of each other and that each has the true but unknown probability of supporting blogs, namely p over 100. So this is defined as a binomial distribution where n, the number of trials, is just the sample size and where the probability of success is just the proportion of supporting blogs divided by 100. So let's enter data for the number in the sample and number supporting blogs and run the Bayesian inference algorithm to calculate the revised probability distribution for the population proportion. Suppose that 43 people in a sample of 100 say they support blocks. Then we enter the sample size of 100 and 43 say they support blocks. We're now going to run the model. There you see the revised distribution for the proportion supporting blocks. The mean is just over 43%. And you can see that I have marked up some upper and lower percentile values here. So the lower 2.5 percentile value is 33.7, which means there's a 2.5% chance that the true proportion is below that, i is below 33.7. The upper 97.5 percentile is 52.9 which means there's a 2.5% chance that the true proportion is above 52.9. So now we can make genuinely meaningful probability statements about this learnt proportion. In this case, we can say there's a 95% probability that support for blogs lies between 33.7 and 52.9. I can go in and change these percentile values. So let's go for a 0.5 and 99.5 percentile. So that will mean that 99% of the distribution lies between the lower and upper percentile. And so you can see in this case that the lower percentile is about 30.7 and the upper percentile is about 56 and that means that we can say that there is a 99% probability that the proportion supporting blogs lies between 30.7 and 56%. Well let's suppose that the sample was bigger. Suppose that in a sample size of a thousand, 430 supported blogs. Notice it's the same proportion but a bigger sample size. So we'll enter a thousand here. And we're going to run the model again. And what you can see is that it's a much narrower distribution. In this case, the lower 0.5 percentile is 38.9 and the upper 99.5 percentile is 47. Hence, we can say there's a 99% probability that the proportion supporting blogs lies between 38.9 and 47. If we revert back to the 95% confidence interval, then we can say that there's a 95% probability that the proportion supporting blogs is between 40 and 46.1. My final point is that some classical statisticians, I frequentist, don't like Bayes because it requires you to assume a prior for an unknown variable. Yet it turns out that the classical analysis makes all kinds of implicit prior assumptions anyway.